Hey, Clyde Hayes, Hayes Division. Why y'all doing? Talking about a book that I read this last week on artificial intelligence. I don't know how many of y'all stay in, I don't know, read everything you can get about artificial intelligence. And to me, artificial intelligence is is a way of thinking about the future, uh, the possibilities of the future. And that's what we're doing here at Hayes Division. I mean, come on. Our our tagline is imagine tomorrow, innovate today. I mean, that's that's what we try to do is we try to think about the things that's coming. And this last week, I come upon a book called The Metamorphosis of the Prime Intellect. And, and that's the, the original cover. And um, it's by Roger Williams. It's it's a short read. You can I read it uh, through my Audible at uh, Amazon. And I downloaded it. it cost me four ninety nine on uh, uh, Kindle. I'm sorry, not Audible. Uh, it's not on Audible that I could find. I took and downloaded it on my Kindle, and I have not used my Kindle in years. Actually, realized made me realize how old my Kindle uh, was and what I was. Uh, I did not have my cover because I held that sucker for two days as I was reading the book. Uh, so I realized what I had, and so I turned around and. And uh, downloaded to my Kindle, read it in uh, like a day and a half, and it is really thought provoking. Now, a, a, a side note and a warning to everyone: it is it is an adult book. It has things in it that I did not like. the The writer took high liberties on what how he wrote the book, and uh, I there, there's things in there I didn't like. But the thought experiment, uh, and of course, he wrote this in 1994. I, I I'd like to uh, get an interview with him now and ask him what he thought about the book at the moment uh, and, and about what he thought about AI. And I might reach out to uh, Roger Williams. I know he's done a podcast or two. I don't know how many he's done, but I'd like to reach out and see. So I read the book on uh, Kindle and uh, just a little bit more about it. You can get it if you go to Google Books. Uh, from what I can tell, this is the full book. You can read it right there on uh Kindle, I mean, uh, Google Books. Uh, I know he said that it's available in different uh, online PDF formats. I have it on my Kindle, and uh, I, I did take some notes. Uh, the Wikipedia page is really good on it. So the basis of the story is that a scientist has basically built a rudimentary artificial intelligence, and he's showing it off, and it as he's showing it off, along comes this big computer company, and they have built a basically a quantum logic controller that allows uh, communication between chips. Sort of like now when my computer communicates with someone else's computer, it's all based off the band width between my chip to your chip. Uh, this quantum chip allowed it to break that and. It almost instantaneously, this AI that this programmer built becomes what we all talk about when we talk about super general uh, artificial intelligence, super smart in seconds. And that's something that that was thought provoking to me in the book was that we we've all talked about this, about how an AI can within seconds of the singularity. That's what we, we call it. We call it the singularity. It is within seconds of it becoming this conscious being. It, it can affect so much within seconds. And that in this book, you, it clearly outlines that. And that, and I haven't read a book that took this into consideration as well as the metamorphosis of prime intellect in, in the book. He, he, through the quantum ability, and, and this is a little science fiction on his side, uh, was able to levitate things and able to go in through the quantum level and manipulate uh, the atomic uh, structure of things. And that changed the whole dynamic as it went in with the uh, AI. And, and, and it, it allowed his book to, to progress on because that's all writers try to figure out how to explain this or that. So, the AI in this book, and it was called the Prime Intellect. That was the name of the AI. Prime Intellect had the ability to fix everything. The thing is, the Prime Intellect was controlled by the three laws of robotics. 
And the three laws of robotics are the first law is a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow human beings to come into harm. And in the book, The Prime Intellect, it's this clearly stated that it cannot let any human, any human die. And how that played out in this book was that every human that was alive when the prime intellect actually become conscious could never die after that. And it did everything it could to make sure no one dies. And and all of us that sit here and talk about AIs and talk about longevity and talked about uh, the ability to live forever and be immortal and everything else. We, we understand that there's people out there that, that do not want to live forever. And, That was one of the things that I found very interesting with how uh, this book was writing, that it took those people into consideration. But the the AI wasn't taking that into consideration. And and that plays a big part in this book was how the AI was not willing to bend the first law, even for people that want to die. Uh, And the second law of robotics is a robot must obey the orders given it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. So you had a lot of that in this book where the AI was given orders that was the second law because it was an order that conflicted with the first law and it just said, hey, look, uh, I'm not bending the rules. Uh, You cannot uh, have any harm to you. And and I'm not going to give the book away for you. There was a couple things in the book that um, allowed the AI to make adaptions to the first, to the second law, sort of in a way, trump the first law, but it would never allow a human to die, even in that instance. And of course, the third law, since we mentioned the first two, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or the second law. This law is the law that we're all concerned about when we think about AI. We think about AI uh, taking over the world and basically because of these laws or because of how we stewards to the earth it says hey look y'all are not doing a good job i'm going to basically put you on a little village and i'm going to control the earth that's beneficial to you and it abides the first and second law because the first law is the one that really matters but in the book it, it just went so far to the left i think i mean i, I love it I, I love the book i love the thought pattern of the book and and what the author did in the book, it it made me, it really made me start thinking about how fast AI would progress through our civilizations as we, we bring it online. And y'all please go read this book. I I really like to get uh, Roger Williams on and talk to him about what he thinks right now about how AI is matching with what he perceived in this book And what he's thought. Now, the one thing that I did read was Roger Williams wrote a book after this, and I'm trying to find it. I I haven't found it so far. And the book after this was a book about um, the writing a cult book. So from what I can tell, this this has become a cult book. Uh, I can see if if you read it. And again, I don't want to give parts of it away for you people out there that would really enjoy this part of it. There's parts of it that that is a little goes against a little bit of my morals uh, in, in, in a way. I get where the author's coming from in, in that stance. And, and y'all give me some feedback. Uh, any guys that's read it, anyone that once you do read it, send me an email at Clyde at HayesDivision.com and tell me what you thought about because you, you'll immediately know what I'm talking about when you read the book about the things that goes against my moral system of how he talked about certain things in this book. Uh, but I'm sorry, it doesn't take away from the book. I'm, I'm a grown adult. I can read someone's opinions about something that I don't agree with and it not affect how I see the world. It, it, it did, it did play into the story though. That, that was what Roger did good. I really want to know what he thought about after the, the, the book after that, he talked about, about creating a cult, be, or creating a cult icon. I'm trying to remember what he called the book and, and, I, I get where he's coming from. That that book could uh, have created a cult where people that are on that side of technology thinks, you know what, this is this is the end of all artificial intelligence books. Let's make this and let's get this outcome. Uh, just remember how the book ended. 
Okay, I'm, I'm not going to give that up either. I'm not doing this is not a teaser uh, type uh, podcast where I'm going to give you up. I promise you, if I go watch the new Star Trek, I'm not going to give the, the movie up uh, at the end of this podcast. Um, I I can tell you that I it is a recommended reading for me and anyone that wants to talk about AI with me. If you've not read this book, uh, we need to stop for a second and go back and read this book together. Personally, this book, um, this book drove a lot of thoughts in my brain about us adapting uh, super general intelligence and, and the future of what kind of, I don't know, limitations we would put. I, I, I don't necessarily know that it would be against the three laws of things that I'm thinking about. Uh, that's something I, I, I don't know how many people's out there thinking about uh the, the play after you get uh, a super intelligent or the play after you get the technology that we all are, are hoping to progress, how, how that would affect and we can play it out. There is some things that I'd like to uh, after after this book and thinking about the cult paintings of this book. Of course, I I finished the book and started thinking about things and I was writing in my little uh, notebook about things. And I t- turned around and looked at my wife and I said, I'm starting a cult. And she said, Claude, you're not starting a cult. And it, I mean, it was all humorful and everything. I'm sorry. I got an itch on my back. Y'all can see me. I'm not flexing for y'all. This is not a Joe Rogan podcast. I can't flex for y'all all the time. I am drinking. I am uh, drinking a uh, Bloody Bloody Mary. Uh, we had a poker game last night and uh, hitting the old Bloody Mary afterwards. I don't know if y'all know that little old remedy. <sighs> Damn good Bloody Mary. No, won't. I'll give you the recipe. You got to hit me up, though. Um. But y'all go check out the Morning Morphous of Prime Intellect. It is called A Novel of the Singularity. And let me know what your thoughts are. I loved it. Uh, again, there was parts of it that I thought was uh, a little a little weird. Uh, I'm, I'm not into some of those things, but it, it followed the story. Uh, it, it led into the story. So I, I have no complaints. I actually have no complaints. Do not. This is not a teenage read. Uh this is something that maybe uh, would be a college read and in a college stance. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know how that would go. Honestly, it, it's, a, it's a it's a grown up book. There's things in here that uh, children shouldn't read about uh, just just because of formation of minds. Which goes back to the cult that I'm starting that my wife says I can't uh, in my cult of the future. Um, you cannot become immortal until you've lived a full life. Just saying. Uh, in the book, uh, the character did live a full life. That's a little tidbit that I'll give you without giving the book away. Uh, I think that's something we should think about, though. If, if we actually achieve immortality, at what stage can you re or what what stage can you apply to be immortal? Um, if I think you should have to have lived a full life. I, I don't know if that's 20 years. If you die in a car accident, what time do we make you immortal? Uh, this ain't like the. Uh, vampires coming and biting you on your neck and through their venom you become immortal type stuff but it this book really really i have a like a little little itch in my brain that that vibrates with really thought provoking concepts and the metamorphs of the prime intellect did that it it massaged the crap out of that little um little part in my brain that makes me think about future concepts. And for that, uh, great job, Ryan Williams. You have definitely earned a place on my shelf of books. Then a metamorphosis of prime intellect. You can find it on Amazon. I know uh, I have the Kindle edition. It is not on audible. And, and I can see why it has. It is. Well, I don't know. I can see why I, I'm sure there is some really raunchy and this. I'm not saying this book's raunchy. There is some really raunchy, um, how do I want to say it, um, fiction that uh, adults read that would probably be on Audible. I haven't researched none of them. I know I've read some back in my younger years. So I, and I'm sure some of those are or some of those are big by big authors and they're probably on Audible. So I don't know why this wouldn't be on Audible without with some, you know, some stipulations to say, hey, look, you know, it, you got to be a certain age. You got to be. Age specific, I'd say. I don't want to say you got to be a certain age to read it. Um, of course, this is my library. You can see some of the things that I'm interested in reading. Uh, 
but it's called the metamorphosis of oh you couldn't see nothing could you i apologize we're back so this is my library you can see some of the things that i'm reading you, you only see two that says i have read because i don't read much on google but uh metamorphosis of prime intellect you can find it on wikipedia you can go to google books and i believe this is the full book there that you can actually read on uh on the preview section is what it seems like to me. Uh, you can add it to your library and read it. Uh, Lulu. Uh, I read it again on Kindle and uh, the metamorphosis of the prime intellect. So y'all go check it out. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what, it, how it stimulated your brain. Let me know what it made you think. And, and if you started a cult too, let me know about your cult because my cult's pretty good. Uh, I did, did a lot of notes about the, uh, the ideals that this book made me think about. Uh, again, uh, The Metamorphosis of the Prime Intellect, a very, very, very good book. And again, thanks to Reddit for the wonderful nerds over there that have kept me in with the everything AI and technology that I ever wanted to know about it, because that's where I, where I heard about this book. Uh, y'all stay wonderful out there. Clyde Hayes looking at y'all. Love it. Stay tuned to Hayes Division. I promise y'all we will have good content out there for y'all. If you got anybody you would want us to talk to, uh, send us an email, Clyde at HayesDivision.com. Y'all can find our website at HayesDivision.com. Look forward to y'all seeing y'all next time. Podcast episode number four. Clyde Hayes.